What's up developers and welcome back to a new video where we will be diving into form requests in Laravel. Quick pause, do you want to support the channel and want me to continue on creating content? Well, you can support the channel on Patreon right now where you get benefits such as a private Discord group where you can share your coding issues and other developers will help you out. If you are interested to join, the link can be found in the description down below. When you start building applications within Laravel, you see that you got a lot of patterns inside your controller that are being repeated. If we take a look at our controller, you'll see a big pattern that is being used inside two methods. Since we're validating our requests right here inside the update method, but we're also doing it right inside of the store method. We're not performing the same exact validation in both methods, since the rules are not equal to each other. We could use form requests to normalize and extract the form validation. Now what is a form request? You can see a form request as a bit of Laravel magic, because it's a custom request class that needs to be created through Artisan, which is completely responsible for validating the request. Besides that, you could also add authorization of users right inside your form request, but we're not going to do that in this video. That being said, let's create our first form request right inside of the terminal, where we need to perform the php artisan make command again, colon. We're going to make a request this time, called post form request. If we hit enter, you'll see that our form request has been created, which will be stored right inside of the app folder, where it creates a new request folder if you have no form request, with a file called postformrequest.php. If we open the file, you'll find a simple class with two methods. The first one is the authorize method, which is returning false at the moment. This method basically checks whether the user is authorized to perform this request or not. At the moment, the return value is set equal to false. If you do want to enable authorization, you should return true, which is actually something we're going to do right now because users should be able to perform this request. So we need to change it. If we don't do it, you'll receive a 403. The second method that we have is the rules method, which basically returns an array, as you could see, of the rules that we have defined inside our post controller. We could technically copy what we have inside our update method right here and paste it inside our form request. But this won't work because the requests that we have are both different. So let's make sure that both of them work inside one request rather than creating two separate requests. So let's undo what we just did and let's remove our entire return statement. Let's define a new variable right here called rules and let's set that equal to an array. Inside the array, we're going to define the rules that we got. And let's not make it too difficult for ourselves, so let's just paste what we just copied. At the moment, you'll see that our title is returning an error, as you could see right here, because we're passing in a variable ID which we don't have. Now to fix this, we just need to add the this keyword right in front of it. The second issue that we got is related to images, right here. Because an image is required when we want to insert a new post, but not when we update a post. In order to fix this, we need to create a if statement right below of it, with a condition where we're going to check whether the request is a post method or not. This can be done by defining the in array method, which accepts two parameters. The first one are basically all methods, so this method, comma. We have a second one, which will be an array where we will pass in one simple string called post. So we're going to check whether the request that we're performing right here is a post request. The reason why I'm using an array right here for the post is because we could add multiple HTTP methods right here if it's needed. Now let's change up some of these values if it's in post. So what we can do right here is say, well, we have our dollar sign rules brackets and we specifically want to grab the image is equal to, well, basically what we have right here. So let's copy it, but let's also add the required tag. Now let's close it off with a semicolon. Now we're not done yet because we're going to call the post form request. So we need to make sure that we return something and what we want to return is our variable rules. Now this should do the trick. The second step is making sure that we replace our validate method inside the post controller. Let's scroll to the top right here with our form request object. And this will actually look pretty weird if it's the first time using it, but we're going to work with some Laravel magic right here. And let's start off right with the request object. Let's replace it 
with post form request. And let's keep the object name equal to request so we don't need to replace our request object right here. Now you can still see that our request object is validating everything. In order to call the validation inside our post form request, we got to make a call to the validated method rather than the validate method. So let's replace it with validated. Before we move on to, so let's save it. Let's navigate back to Google Chrome. Let's refresh it, create a new article. Let's submit it. And as you could see, all fields that we have right here are required, which is coming from the post form request. Now, if we try to create one with everything checked, so let's say title, excerpt, two minutes, body, select a file, submit it. As you can see, our post has been created. Now let's do the same thing for our update method. Let's navigate back, scroll down to the update method. Step number one is replacing the request object with the post form request. Then we need to replace our validate method with the validated method, save it, navigate back to Google Chrome. Let's edit our post. And let's say that we only want to change the, the excerpt to excerpt tree, submit it. As you could see, the excerpt has changed. And if we navigate back to Visual Studio Code, open our database client, post table, and let's scroll to the bottom our second page, right here, you'll see that our image path is still visible. This was it for this video where we dived into form requests in Laravel. In the next video, we will be diving into adding pagination to our blog overview. If you do like my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.